Good afternoon. This is Pam Bachelor with Digital Teaching and Learning. And uh, excited to have you here. We're getting started with Canvas for Teachers, talking about Gradebook and Power Teacher Grade Passback. So sure to be an interesting hour. Um, with me today, I do have uh, my colleague, Kathy Parker from Digital Teaching and Learning. Good to have you, Kathy. Hey, it's good to be here. And then of course, also we have with us our Canvas guru and expert on all things uh, great pass back, <laughs> Christy Barn. Hi, everybody. Glad that you were able to join us again today. Excited. Uh, happy New Year and um, hope everything's going well for you as you uh, have come back after a lot of rest and relaxation. Absolutely. We hope your 2020 is off to a great start. We do have a couple of questions uh, just to uh, quickly go over here. Uh, first of all, in the GoToWebinar panel, you should see a handout section and you can see a, a PDF copy of the slide deck that Christy is going to be using tonight. Um, you can also type in the bit.ly that's on the screen right now. Uh, so however you want to do that, you want to make sure you have the slide deck up because uh, Christy's going to go over lots of links. We're just going to do a couple of quick questions to make sure that you all can hear us and see us or see the screen anyway. So we'll give about five more seconds for this poll and everyone can hear us. So that's good. And then we're going to see if you could see the presenter screen earlier, if you could see uh, Christy's PowerPoint. All right. And then we have one more question um, and this is to help us. Um, does your public school unit um, have access to the paid version of Canvas, which is usually a red icon. Uh, Wake County has a different color. So if you're in Wake County, no, you do have the paid version, uh, but your icon is a different color. It's not red. All right. So we're going to share the results there. So it looks like we have most folks that do, and we have a few that are unsure. Okay, great. Um, as, as Pam mentioned on your NCA cloud or IEM dashboard, if you have a red canvas icon, um, Wake County, yours is a different color, but Wake County, just know you do have paid version. <laughs> uh, but anybody else, if you have a red canvas icon, then you do. And that's very important for tonight's session because Power Teacher Pro Grade Passback will only work if you have a paid version of Canvas where your district or school has connected to Power Teacher Pro and to PowerSchool. Um, if not, then if you're just using a free for free, excuse me, free for teachers uh, Canvas accounts, you will not be able to do grade pass back. Yeah. Um, if at any point in time you have any questions uh, during the webinar, please use the questions feature and go to webinar. We will keep track of those questions. I will be answering them and as well as I uh, we'll bring them to Christy for her input as well. Um, I just have a little bit of boring information before we get started. Um, so for your participation in today's webinar, you will get a CEU certificate for 0.1 CEU, which is equal to one hour of credit. Um, this certificate will be recommended for digital learning competency credit. However, you must follow um, your local uh, public school units process for getting that credit. We cannot give you the credit. You have to follow your local process and submitting your certificate along with um, any other information that's required. Um, for digital learning competency credit in particular, um, usually your district will ask you for an artifact or reflection. Um, so be thinking about you know, how you can talk about what you've learned today from this webinar. Um, this webinar is being recorded within five business days from the webinar. You'll receive an email from me with your um, certificate as well as a copy of the slide deck and a link to the recording so that way you can go back um, and re-watch this webinar as you have questions going on down the road. Um, all right. So our full schedule with um, descriptions and registration links of all of the remaining webinars um, is linked to you uh, for your review so you can look and see what's coming up. Um, you see that um, in February, we're going to be talking about learning mastery gradebook. 
um, and analytics. So um, if you are doing standards um, aligned instruction, standard aligned assessments, um, anything that's competency based using course outcomes, um, tracking data, you're going to definitely want to tune into that, that session. Um, in March, we'll talk about Canvas Commons, so teaching you where to go to find some really good content that you can just import directly into your course and not have to recreate that wheel, including our North Carolina Commons, um, where we have um, North Carolina shared content. Um, in April, we'll talk about creating a custom homepage, and then in May, we'll talk about, okay, you've been through this year, we've you know, reflect on everything we've learned, what are the next steps, like what questions do you have remaining, what resources do you need, and getting ready for the next school year. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing you all in February. Um, we are meeting on February 5th, um, which is um, not very long, uh, so I'll see you soon there, and we have the registration link also linked on that slide. Today we're going to talk about new gradebook. Um, if your district or your school has not switched over to the new grade book, um, you will see it come uh, Monday because it is actually um, being forced on in all um, Canvas instances and courses this weekend. So um, most of you probably already have it. I know all of the school districts I work directly with um, turned it on for the start of this school year, if not beforehand, but if you have Still have an old grade book. It doesn't look like the one I'm showing you today. Just know that it will look like this on Monday. Um, also, we're gonna talk about, uh, in, in addition to just having an introduction to it, we're gonna look at some of the settings and talk about um, Power Teacher Pro Grade Pathback. And then any questions that you have remaining, we'll take time to answer those. Um, I don't normally do this, but I am going to actually show a video. Um, it is seven minutes, but I think that it's a really great, concise overview of the new grade book. Points out all of the features, all of the great things about it, um, with the one exception being grading periods. He does mention it, but we'll talk more about it together. Um, but um, I am going to just show you a real quick. Um, it is a seven-minute video. It's going to be linked in the slide deck for you to come back to and review or share with others. Um, but I think it does a really great job of, of giving you a good overview. So um, hopefully um, you will have no problems with audio here. So I will ask that um, you give us a thumbs up if you're able to hear the video as it starts. And that will be a raise your hand in the attendee panel. So um, once the video starts. If you just raise your hand, make sure the video is going. And I'm just pausing, Pam. Are we good? Are we getting good um, feedback that people can hear? So it looks like we can see the video, but we cannot hear it. I'm going to try one more time because I paused it pretty quickly. So. Are we still not hearing that? No, no, no volume still. Okay, then I'll talk through it. So let me, let, I'm going to mute my, my, um, my own audio so I don't have to listen to him talk <laughs> and I'm going to talk through it as he demonstrates. So this is an introduction to the new grade book. So um, just like the old grade book, you access it or will access it in your course on the left hand navigation bar under grades. This is the way that the new grade book looks. It's not completely different than the old grade book, but you will notice some new things. You will have a view option, which gives you, um, or a view link, which gives you the option to arrange by, and you'll be very happy to know. You can um, reorder the things in your grade book by alphabet, due dates, modules. You can also filter by assignment groups, modules, sections, or even student groups. And if you have grading periods set up by your district, you also can filter by grading period to just show like quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Um, but if you wanted to see just as assignment groups, you also can do that. 
So once you select a filter, then that filter pops up over here and you're able to select and you'll see that you have fewer results now um, on your gradebook page. And then you can clear that filter just by navigating to that again. You also are able to um, change the color for statuses, but you'll notice that for each of the um, assignments you or scores, you see some different colors in here showing those statuses, depending on the color that you've set for each of those. You also can either show or choose to not show um, unpublished assignments. I'm gonna pause right here. If you were using Power Teacher Pro Grade Pass Back, under Actions, in addition to Import and Export, you would also see a Power Teacher Pro Sync button under Actions. So that was an additional button that will live there. Most of us don't import assignments because most of our grading is done in Canvas. Um, you can export to a CSV file. It's always good to do at the end of the term or end of the year to keep those. With your students, you can sort by and you can choose what to sort by. You can just choose how it's displayed. You can display secondary information. So if you wanted to see their login ID, that just is their UID, you could do that. You also can show inactive or concluded enrollment. Here's where you see all of those assignment names. Of course, they're truncated. And then in this main box is where you would see all of those individual assignment scores, including excused. You can drag those um, and resize them. You can drag and drop the columns as well. At the end of the screen, so if you scrolled all the way to the right is where you see your scores for assignment groups and uh, for that grading period or for the term. For each assignment, you can sort them by certain criteria. You can message students too if they have a score above, a score below a certain amount or they've not submitted. You can choose to curve grade, set a default grade, post grades or not, uh, hide them. You can choose how you want them to, to enter them as points or percentages. And if you have a grade posting policy, you can decide if you want to automatically show students that grade <clears throat> as you're entered, or if you want to wait and manually do them all at one time. When you click on a cell, you're able to adjust that score if needed. Most of us grade from speed grader, but if you're grading and entering grades directly in your grade book in this kind of like spreadsheet view, you can certainly do that. Um, as if you clicked on that link, the little door looking icon, you get more assignment details. This is like your grading tray, which will allow you to jump to that assignment, to speed grader for that assignment. You could change the grade here. You can change the status. So if something is showing as late, I'm gonna pause there. Often get a message saying, I don't want this to show as late. The student was absent and I gave them extended time. You can always access that. Um, let me just rewind it just a tad to show you that. I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna let it play through just a second and show you that little door again so that you can see um, where you access. This is the little icon that you're gonna access to change that status. So if a student, again, if it's showing late and you don't want it to show late or it's showing it's missing or something and you don't want it to, then you can certainly use that door to change that status. You also can leave comments for the students um, by using that door to open up this grading tray. Gonna let that just scroll through. And then we'll be looking at some more of the assignment settings that you have, those feature options or, or the options that are available with the new gradebook. <clears throat> This is, they scrolled all the way to the right. So you see, these are the assignment groups. You can see that these are weighted groups. So you can see the averages for each of those assignment groups, as well as the total for the course. And this course doesn't have grading periods. So this is a total for the course. If your administrator, Canvas administrator has allowed you to override grades, you can do an override there. Also with the gear here, you can get to these different settings, including late policy. So you can automatically apply a grade for missing submission. So if your district or school has a policy for that, um, I know, you know, not to get into um, the reasons why um, or, you know, to debate that, but if they do have a policy for that, then you certainly can add 
uh, for any missing assignment that a student automatically gets a 50 or a 60, whatever that policy is. If you have in your classroom a policy where you de uh, um, deduct points or percentages based on late submissions, then you also can do that, including submitting a lowest possible grade percent. And then after you would select these or choose or input this information, you can update. You do not have to use these settings, but if you choose to, then they're there for you. You also have, um, as you see, grade posting policy. That's, we saw how to do it for an individual assignment, but if you wanted to set a policy for your course as a whole, but you wanted to automatically let students um, see their grades as soon as you enter them, then you could do, um, you could select automatically post grades. If you decided that you wanted for all assignments in your course to manually post them, so you just wanted to keep them hidden until you were ready for students to see them, then you could choose to manually post grades. And then on each individual assignment, you would make that decision when they're able to see them. Some teachers use manually post grades for things like big projects or exams or things that they think they might have to curb or readjust the grades because they may not want students to see those grades until they're ready and they've graded the whole class. So that's something that can be helpful in those circumstances. So that's, that is an option with the new grade book. Both of these, the late policies and grade posting policies are new. You have additional um, settings you, or you may have um, additional settings under the advanced tab and that is only if your district or school Canvas admin is allowing you to override that final grade. Um, as a reminder, that override final grade is over in this column, but I just want to caution you, you can override this final grade in Canvas, but we're talking about green, uh, Power Teacher Pro Grade Passback today and with Power Teacher Pro Grade Passback, those grades, um, the override does not pass back to Power Teacher Pro. And the reason why is because only individual assignment grades go to Power Teacher Pro, not any of these category totals, not your final grade, and not the override. But you could override it in Canvas. It, let's say that you were having an issue where Power Teacher Pro was calculating the grade to be, you know, 1% different or something, or 0.5% different. You could always override the Canvas grade to match the one in Power Teacher Pro after that pass back. So that's one um, effective use of that feature. You also could select individual view so that you see um, students individually their grades. You can also have global settings to treat ungraded as zeros, um, have student names. When you are ready to select a student, you would select that student. You can even look at an individual assignment previous assignment, next assignments, and those details are going to be showing down below. Um, as you see, as they scroll down, you would see the grade the student got. You could select to excuse it here. You could look at the submission details, um, and then you see additional information about that student's grade in the class overall, as well as for that particular assignment. You can switch back to the gradebook by going up to the here and selecting gradebook in that menu. You have gradebook history, so you can go to any student and you can see um, how, how that grade has changed for that student. So that's very helpful, especially if you have um, multiple graders within a single course. So hopefully that was helpful as a just real quick overview. I'm going to turn my volume back on. Sorry if anybody said anything to me because I had it uh, muted so I could talk over the video. Were there any questions or anything that came out of that discussion, Pam? Um, so Diane asked if um, she could ask a question. So I'm going to try to unmute you, Diane. Um, let's see how this goes. Okay. All right, Diane, you should be unmuted now. All right. Okay. Well, if that question comes in or Diane, you have it, um, we can certainly pause and revisit. Yes. Please use that question um, feature. But otherwise, that was uh, that was the only question we had, um, other than another one that I answered. So we're good. 
Okay, thank you. Um, so there was an announcement. Um, well, actually, we've been announcing for quite a while that the new grade book was coming. So as I, I mentioned, it's coming on January 18th. So if you happen to be a Canvas admin, admin just remember that that's going to happen. So make sure um, teachers have these resources. If you are a teacher, um, then these are resources that you can use. The video I just showed is the new grade book overview. It also is linked to this image. There's also a comparison chart between the old grade book and the new grade book so you can um, see all of the things that the current grade book doesn't have that grade detail trail that the tray excuse me that i showed you old grade book didn't have late policies um, did not have changed that status it also didn't have the colors that they could change um, did not have the inner grades as if you wanted to change it from assigned points or percentages um, there were some sorting options but not as many um, we did not have the post policy, but just note that what you used to use as mute um, is now grade post policy, which is much more robust and you have much more control. So just know that that mute functionality, you'll no longer see mute, but you'll see post policy. Um, again, you have more options for arranging, filtering, sorting, um, updated colors and icons. Uh, and then these will all of these show you exactly how you can integrate in comments depending on where you are. So, but not very much different in entering grades directly into the grade book or into SpeedGrader, but you do have the guides here um, as well as how to continue doing things like messaging students, doing individual pages, um, all of those things that you, most of these were things that you were able to do previously, but there's just a new guide link for you. So hopefully that's a helpful resource for you, um, as well as there's some frequently asked questions in our users group, which have um, the users group, let me show you specifically, has um, the new gradebook guides, a direct link to those, um, so you can get to them. There's instructor guides, there's also student guides in case your students have any questions. But also remember that you can always access your Canvas guides from within your Canvas instance or course by going to help, and then you should have search the Canvas guides. So anytime that you wanna access those guides, that link lives directly there, so you don't have to bookmark it, you don't have to know where it's at, you're an instructor, and then you're, there is actually a whole section for new grade books. So all of the things that you wanna know how to do with screenshots and detailed instructions, step-by-step -step instructions. So that resource is there for you. As I mentioned, with multiple grading periods, um, you would find those with view, filters, and then additional, this was not in the video, but um, with, if your district or school has set up multiple grading periods, then you would see the option to filter there. And I'm gonna show you an example. In this US history course, I do have multiple grading periods set up. So I can go to view and I can go to filter and I can go to grading periods and I can filter by either all grading periods, quarter one, quarter two, and notice that that final score, let me go here. So that final score is going to look different depending on what quarter I'm in because that's going to give me that quarter's grading or score. Okay, and this is just a sample course of these sandbox. I apologize, there's not great data in here, but it does allow me to show it to you. So again, I'm gonna, if I wanted to turn that off, I could turn that off, or I could turn that back on, grading periods there, and I find all of those filters there. Um, also, if you're using grading periods, I do just wanna note that under your assignment tab, then you're also gonna be able to filter your assignments by grading period. Okay, sometimes I get that question. Very important to use due dates in Canvas. It's important because if you're using grading periods and your grades won't be accurate unless you're using due dates because assignments, um, your grading period final scores will be based on those assignments that have due dates within that grading period as set up by your district. Um, and also, if we're going to be using Power Teacher Pro Grade Pass Back, you have to have due dates as well. So, Chrissy, quick question. Yes. Yeah. 
James asks if you use uh, Q1 and Q2, will it average both if you want to just have an average coursework grade overall? It depends on the settings set up by your district. Um, some allow it to show a final grade and some do not. Um, because the actual like authoritative source for final grades is PowerSchool, a lot of districts disable um, that post-show final grade and they just allow that grade calculation to happen in Power Teacher Pro. So whereas you would see individual quarter or grading term grades in Canvas, the um, student or the parent would see the final grade in Power Teacher Pro. So that is a district setting. It depends on how, what they have that set to. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I did just want to revisit the discussion about the late policies and grade posting policies. Um, as a reminder, you find those, you access both of those under this gear, and you can turn them on or not. Um, just be mindful that, you know, if you are, if your district or school does have a policy regarding missing of submissions, make sure that whatever if you decide to use late policies that it aligns to that. Um, it's very nice if you do have a minimum score, this is a great feature. Um, and also if your district or school has a policy that is um, matched that you're, that you're grading based on mastery, um, then this is, um, and, and if you are not able to apply deductions for late submissions, then, you know, please know that even though this is a feature, we certainly wouldn't recommend that you do that if that goes against your district or school policies. Um, with grade posting policy, if you choose to manually post grades, then for each assignment, I'm going to go into an individual assignment, you can see this is a manually posting grade. So I can go in here and I can decide to grading posting policy, I can go ahead and post those grades now, and those will all post to my students. So I just went to the three dots, I went to the grade posting policy, and then I went to post those grades, and that's how I posted those grades for my students. Any questions about late policies or grade posting before I move on to Power Teacher Pro? Any questions at all about the new grade book? Before I move on. No, I think we're good. Okay, great. All right, so um, I don't often do this, but I am going to link out to another slide deck. And the reason why is because I continually update this slide deck that links here um, for anything that changes with Canvas and Power Teacher Pro Grade Passback. You've probably seen it if you are in a district that uses Power Teacher Pro Grade Passback. Um, this is the same slide deck I've been using for a couple years, and I just update it as changes are made. So I never like to make a copy of it or put those slides somewhere else. I just always want to make sure everybody has access to the most recent and up-to-date information. So I did just link back out to another slide deck. Um, before I even go into that, I just wanted to mention a few tips that you're going to hear throughout. One is that you have to import and not just import, but also use grading categories that come from Power Teacher Pro. Um, that is the very first step and the only thing you have to do that in order for grade pass back to work. Um, you also, if you have um, assignments, you've ended a grading uh, quarter, like quarter one has ended, then you need to disable the post assist for any assignment in quarter one or your grade pass back will no longer work. Same thing with quarter two, quarter three, quarter four as you move ahead. So best practice is once you finish grading an assignment, so I have all of the grades entered for this, then I would just um, select to um, not post those grades to this anymore. And I'll show you that setting in just a second. Also, grade sync is not instantaneous. I mean, it can be, but it's not always. Typically, um, you know, I say two hours is a good amount of time to wait to see if those grades have posted to Power Teacher Pro, but it can take up to 24 hours, especially in high traffic times um, across the state. Most of our grading terms align pretty closely, so you're having teachers from all over the state sending information back and forth between Canvas and PowerSchool, and so just know that sometimes, especially high traffic times, especially end of day, you know, 3.30 to 5, um, you're going to have some slower grade syncs. 
There is an option to set it up to manually run every single night, and that, of course, will help you um, avoid those delays. It'll be in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, so that's nice, and I'll show you how to do that, but if you are having trouble and not seeing your grade sync, please do wait um, at least two hours, if not longer, to make sure that those grades haven't posted. And then if you are having trouble, then please submit a support ticket. So in everybody's Canvas instance, you should have the option to go to help and report a problem. And go, report that problem directly from your course, but they're going to want to know, you know, what, what are you having? What problems are you having? Give them the link to your course. Give them the specific assignment names. Tell them exactly what's going on, because if not, they're going to come back and ask you for that, and then it's going to delay that answer or that help. So, do that. Never, never take um, uh, hesitate to file a support ticket, but just make sure that you have information in there that helps them identify exactly where you're having the problem. Um, for some of you, you have tier one support, which means you're, when you report a problem, it goes directly to Canvas. That also means you have a phone number here you see that you can call. It also means you see a chat feature here you can call. If that's the case, then don't hesitate to call and don't hesitate to chat with Canvas support also. Um, it, chat can be super helpful and super quick. Probably my best recommendation if you have that available. For others, you just have, um, what's called standard, or not, excuse me, not standard, 24-7 support, and that means when you file a ticket, it goes to someone within your district they're, or your school. They're going to look first, and then if they can't resolve it, they're going to send it to us, but just don't ever hesitate to use this link because they're going to need to know exactly what course, and if you submit it from this course, then they should be able to easily see which course you're having trouble in. So, Canvas Empower Teacher Pro grade pass back. Um, I've used, again, the same slide deck for a couple of years, but I try to pull out some information. So if things, um, I'm hearing the same questions over and over, then I've added in maybe a couple of call outs or highlights. So that's exactly what's happened here. Um, if you are in a situation where you cross list sections into your courses, then please make sure you do that before you do anything else that we're talking about. Now, if you don't do that, then you won't, you may not know what I'm talking about, but if you do it, you know what I'm talking about. So um, only if you, if you know what I'm talking about and you cross list sections into your course um, so that you're having them all there together, then make sure you do that before you import your Power Teacher Pro grading categories. You have to set up the categories first in Power Teacher Pro. Um, so just make sure that you have unique categories in Power Teacher Pro. They don't say, you know, they're not called the same as the things in the categories that you might have in Canvas if you're importing content from a previous year. Um, also make sure that if you have multiple sections of the same course and they're all in the same Canvas course, that all of your Power Teacher Pro grading categories for those sections are the same. If you have two sections and the sections are not the same in Power Teacher Pro in terms of the grading categories, but they um, are both in that same Canvas course, then you're not going to be able to use Grade Pass Back. You have to have this grading categories in Power Teacher Pro have to be the same. After you create your Power Teacher Pro grading categories, then you have to wait 24 hours. And then you're going to import those assignment groups into Canvas. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on the next slide. So when you're in Canvas on your Assignments tab, you will go to the three-dot menu here and hit Import Assignment Groups. Um, that will import them. When they're imported, you're going to see them. They generally import at the bottom of the page. So if you already have assignments in this on your Assignments tab, you're going to have to scroll to the bottom to see them. Once you scroll to the bottom, then you're going to see these Power Teacher Pro imported categories, and you're going to know that they're imported because they have this icon. Any groups that were in your course beforehand do not have the icon. So you should see those. Now, you have to use these groups, which means if you have any assignments that are in groups that don't have that icon, you have to move them into the ones with the icon. Now, really helpful tricks are that in your courses, um, if you do have, and I, I don't have Power Teacher Pro myself, so I can't demonstrate this for you, but I can show you how to move assignments. So I have this assignment group. Obviously, this is not a Power Teacher Pro assignment group, but let's just pretend that I had one down here that was. 
I could either take my assignment and drag it manually, or I could even go to these dots and say move content, and I could say which group I wanted to move it to, where I wanted the assignments to be placed at the top, at the bottom, wherever, and I could move all of those assignments. So now you see there are no assignments there, and this assignment group got much larger. So you have to move all of your assignments into those categories that have this icon. That's what this is telling you, making sure that all your assignments that you want to sync to Power Teacher Pro are placed in those assignment categories. Um, when you are creating your assignment, this, this particular screenshot at the top is from the assignment editing page. You have a box that you can check that says Sync to Power Teacher Pro. Include this assignment's grade when syncing to your school student information system. If you're when you're creating an assignment, if you know it's one you want to sync to Power Teacher Pro, then you check this box. You will also know that that box has been checked on your assignments tab. This is again on this assignments tab of your course. This the second screenshot is um, on this page because on your assignments tab, if you have set it to sync to Power Teacher Pro, then this little icon will be green. This green check means that this assignment has been published. Both of those things have to be green in order for an assignment to sync to Power Teacher Pro. So the assignment has to be in a category with this icon, and both of these have to be green. The good news is, is you can either just click on that. Sorry, I can't, it's not live here. You can just click on that to turn it green, or you can open the assignment up and click on the setting within the assignment editing page. Um, easier to just probably click on this. You can also click on it to disable it um, when you have finished grading that assignment or at the end of a quarter. This is the old grade book, which is going away on Monday, so I need to delete this slide. But in the new grade book, as I showed you earlier, um, you go to actions and then sync to Sync to Power Teacher Pro, and it'll have probably your school dis school or district name here also. Um, and you just select that button to manually sync those assignments. Now, you also can set it up to sync daily, um, and that would be on this um, tab, which is under monitoring and reporting on the sidebar of your course and or it can be called grade sync sometimes um, that label has different names sometimes it's called grade sync sometimes it's called monitoring or reporting on this um, tab there are actually now two tabs one says reporting which looks like this screen the second says sync which looks like this screen so on that sync you can either submit a bulk sync request which would go back and submit um, sync all assignments from the beginning of the course. If you just sync from your grade book and this button, it's only going to sync the things that have been changed the last 30 days. Whereas a bulk sync will, will do everything from the beginning of the course that is still set to sync. And or you can schedule a daily sync. And that says it runs sometime between midnight and 7 a.m. mountain time. So if you set that to schedule a daily sync, it'll just automatically run daily. You also, again, on the reporting tab, because it actually now is labeled reporting tab, on the reporting tab, you will see everything that you've synced to Power Teacher Pro. So you'll see everything, or you can filter it by those things that were canceled, the errors, failed, in progress, in queue, success. Each thing will also have, a, have this icon to show you if that sync has um, been successful, or if it's still in progress, or if it failed. Um, if you have errors, there is a monitoring tool error message dictionary that you can see that will tell you exactly for each of the errors what it means and how to resolve it. So this is a good resource to bookmark or to make sure you always remember it's embedded within the slide deck because it'll tell you exactly how to resolve those issues and what's causing those errors. As a reminder, error messages don't always mean that a sync failed. Sometimes it's just an error. So check out that monitoring and reporting tool to see what it says. Um, 
when you set up your Power Teacher Pro grading categories, wait 24 hours before you import them into Canvas. Um, for those of you getting ready to start second semester and you're setting up your Power Teacher Pro grading books, again, maybe just remember that. Avoid those high traffic times as we've discussed. Um, remember to disable that post grade assist button when the student's grades are final or the assignment's closed. This is very important and I haven't mentioned it before. Only assignments that are assigned to the whole class or to a whole section will pass back to Power Teacher Pro. Power Teacher Pro does not accept assignments that are assigned to individual students and that would include Mastery Pass. Now, where we think that it's super um, beneficial that in Canvas you can assign assignments to the individual students or you can create those mastery paths, uh, definitely think those benefits outweigh, you know, the negative consequence of maybe having to enter some grades manually in Power Teacher Pro for those specific assignments that you have differentiated. Um, we do want to point out that that is the case and let you know that if it is an assignment that you have set up to just be assigned to individual students, or um, that's a mastery path assignment, then it's not gonna pass back to Power Teacher Pro. And as I mentioned earlier, anytime that you're you know, having trouble, then do submit um, an assignment, or excuse me, a support ticket from within the course. And there are also some additional resources there, including some videos for you. Do we have any questions? No, we're, we're doing good so far. So that is um, all that I prepared for this evening. I'm certainly happy to, if you want to take a minute um, and open one of your own Canvas courses and look to see um, if you have the um, new grade book, then um, you know, that, that would be helpful so that you know that you've already got that ready to go or if you wanted to see if you have imported your Power Teacher Pro categories, um, then certainly you can do that. And if you wanted, if you have not done that yet, um, then you can certainly do that. And if you have a question or need support um, while we're here, then we're certainly happy to help. Or anything else, any feedback that you have or any questions um, that you have with Power Teacher Pro Grade Passback or the new grade book, um, you know, certainly explore for Let's pause for just a couple minutes and let you explore and you can ask any questions and get real time support. So Christy, people are just saying that the webinar has been very helpful. Okay. Well, that sounds fantastic. Um, please don't hesitate, um, again, to file a support ticket. If you do have any issues, um, re-reference the slide deck. Um, again, I've been using it for a couple years, so I know that when people follow the steps, it does work. Um, and just know that if there are any issues, then we always work, um, if, you know, both um, DPI, PowerSchool, and Canvas work together to troubleshoot anything that does come up along the way. So. Looking forward to um, seeing you next month and to um, hearing more about how things are going. All right, thank you, Christy. And just as a reminder, um, I will be sending out those emails within five business days. It is not an automated process, so please give me a little bit of time to get those emails sent out with the link to the recording and your CEU certificates. And uh, we hope you have a uh, wonderful start to your second semester. And thank you to Kathy for joining us as well and helping out with chat and questions. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye.